For our location property, 125 Sarkorn has been located in Pram Sarkorn. If you're talking about the whole Sarkorn Street, it's only 20 projects, it's quite less supply. And it's only eight buildings has the valid access to the main road. This is the example of the property has been got the direct access from the main road to Sarkorn Road. We are next to central of Lung Pini Park, one of the biggest park in Bangkok in here. Central world is this street. After central world is the Lumpini Park. And after Lumpini Park is the Sarkorn Road. So it's very, very in central of Bangkok. So our residence is in here, 125 Sarkorn, next to Singaporean Embassy. And it's just opposite to Myanmar Embassy is on here. In terms of the demand and supply in the area of Sirom Sarkorn, as you know that less supply, only 20 buildings so far. So since the data from 2010, when we have launched the first condominium in Sarkorn, the absorption rate, whatever the developer launched in Sirom Sarkorn is quite very fast to sell. The land price in Bangkok, Sarkorn is the second most expensive land in Bangkok. Central of Lumpini that is the most expensive land in Bangkok. Because of the land in central of Lumpini, mostly is a leasehold. If I hire people, I still cannot find the land in central of, of the Bangkok because it's the land belongs to the king. So that's why Sarkorn is the second expensive land in Bangkok. And follow with Sukhum with Plan, follow with Riverside Plan. If we consider only to buy a land to build up a house in Sarkorn, market price of the land pitch is around 2.5 million baht per square watt. In terms of the developer, if we want to buy the land to build up, the condominium. That's why second hand market is mean condo has been used for a while. In central of Lumpini has been hit up to five hundred thousand baht per square meters already. For the second area like Silong, Sarkorn, Sukhumvit is around three hundred thousand baht per square meters. This is a used condo, like two to five year condominium. If you interest Thailand property for rent it out, for the capital gain in Thailand property is about 5%. We are, have been lagging to number four in Southeast Asia. For example, if you interest to buy like seven million by condominium, Definitely it's one bedroom, not studio type. You can rent it out around 30,000 Thai baht, which is more than 5% yield already. And if you want to keep for the capital gain, right? Because of the land price increase every year, the construction price, labor cost is increased every year. So if you interest for buy for investment, the capital yield per year is around 4 to 5%. And price per square meter in the area, second home market is around 250,000 baht per square meter. About our project is very central of Bangkok. We are just next to the Singapore Embassy, and along the street is the financial district of Bangkok. Who we are? We, we are under the company. Tourism Thailand Agency, or has been known as TTA, we listed into the stock exchange of Thailand. Our company has made business about angle chemicals, about shipping company, food and beverage, and investment. So we have been joint venture with another two companies from Japan. Candon Rezi, that is the electric.
companies in Japan and Torrey Construction, the construction company in Japan. In terms of the asset value, PTA has 3.8 billion Thai baht asset value. KRD has around 200,000 billion Thai baht values. And Torrey Construction has around 350 billion Thai baht. Not only we have very strong partner in terms of raise the fund, but we also have a very good brand of like interior company for decoration inside facility. We have used DWP as a partner. DWP has been designed for Mandarin Oriental in Bangkok, 98 Wireless in Bangkok, one of the top a luxury brand condominium in Bangkok and we partner with Barber and Turner's P and T for the architectures of the building M and E and Trop for the landscape. Last last year we have won uh, Asia property award in terms of the best interior design building and the best landscape. This is the award that we got last year, last around like last October, November. Our building has very wide, 97 meters front page. Location in the real CBD is only less than one kilometer away from the Lumpini Park. Embassy area, international school nearby. Building over here. This is the off plan project. It's three and a half years to finish. 97 inches wide for the front case. Very beautiful. Two towers. Q lobby. One to five courtyard in the middle. Like we can do high tea. Greenhouse nursery, adventure playground for the kids, basketball, 450 square meter for the garden. And we have very huge swimming pool, 50 meters. Also have the kid pool. Key highlight for luxury projects, we have sanctuary spa pool, we have salon room, we have fitness room. In the same floor, we have meeting room, multi purpose room where you can do your cut. Meeting room, or five meeting rooms. music room and piano rooms. We have social club and the kid room on 32nd floor. This is a key highlight. We have the maid porter room on the second floor that the maid can have their space. They can stay overnight there. We have the showroom, one bedroom. The size 35 square meters. So the ceiling is quite high, three meters high. Bedroom size around 69.9 square meters. The selling point of this unit is the corner unit, and we have the plus area. You can call to plus one bedroom. Provide with fully fitted, with fit kitchen, with fit in closet, bathroom for you. Because only some loose furniture you have to buy. Top gardens, we have Sky Entertainment where you can karaoke room. We have Kavita Dining House on the top floor where you can have dinner with your private chef and the pool party over there. Sakon is very safe area. 
for the location. This is the main street of Sarton. This is Lumpini Park. We are around one kilometers away from the Lumpini Park. Here is what Sukhoi Sarton. It's the beginning of Sarton before Nalakiwat Road. And it's only 500 meters from us to the BTS Tongnan Sea. That is the financial district of Bangkok. And it's very convenient. It's just opposite us to BNH International Hospital. We have been signed the MOU between 125 Sarton and BNH International Hospital to create how to take care of residents in emergency access care. And also, our residents can enjoy the benefit of this discount at the hospital and got three times per year for the telemedicine for the whole family can apply. The area is itself is quite close to the department store here to central Silong complex is around 1.3 kilometers and to go to Icon Sayam is only 4 kilometers. If we back to the central world area Gesong village of Sayam Paragon is only 4.6 kilometers. For the hospital, not only international hospital BNH, but also the popular hospital here, Dula Longan Hospital, Saint Louis Hospital, not far from the property as well. This area for Thai students very popular in terms of the school. Like for me, I also graduate at Saint Joseph Convent School, and my. Another two brothers also graduate in the same street. So this is the popular location for education. The bedroom have the area for the working room where you can make for two plus one bedroom. Good for investment, good for the second home. And we only one hour flight from your country. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. I will be at the back there. And to give more information, not only the property, but how to apply for the visa, Queen Jennifer can give you deeply more detail about that. Very nice to meet you here. Thank you so much. Hey, my name is Jennifer. Okay, I'm representing Ames Immigration and Relocation Specialist, and we are an immigration agency um, headquartered in Singapore, right? So let me uh, today I'm going to introduce to you, okay, um, uh, two countries. Okay, one is Thailand, and the other one is Singapore. And what are the visa uh, requirements, or rather the visa pathways? So I'll be taking you through Thailand, and my boss, my uh, CEO, okay, will bring you through uh, the Singapore visa pathways, right? Okay, so this is um, just a brief uh, introduction to AIMS. Okay, we are headquartered in Singapore because we started, we are founded there. We started our business in November 2006. So we've been doing 17 years of immigration. Okay, so we are pretty entrenched, okay, uh, in this business. Okay, we've seen how the whole immigration industry has changed over the years. Okay, and uh, currently, okay, we have um, 10, 10 offices spread across eight countries. Okay, from North Asia, okay, in China and Hong Kong, all the way down to Southeast Asia. Okay, so we've got one, um, we've got uh, our office here in Yangon. Okay, and this, uh, you know, compared to the rest of the other offices, Yangon is actually our so called the youngest, okay, because it was the last one that we opened in 2019, right? Okay, so this is uh, my CEO, his name is Pierce Chang, he's also the founder, okay, of Ames uh, Food Group, okay. Um, he has been receiving um, awards, okay, for five years running already, okay, starting 2018, where he won the top 100 global migration agency CEO, and since then, every year, he has been receiving the same award, okay, in the immigration industry, right? So, we're very proud of his achievement. 
Okay, now just to give you a snapshot of uh, the immigration or rather the destination countries that we help our clients to migrate to. Okay, so we help our clients to migrate to more than 20 destination countries. So you can see that, you know, we, uh, Australia, Canada, US, as well, as well as Singapore, these are our top four, okay, countries, okay, that most of our clients would want to migrate to. And then we also help some of our clients, okay, to go to um, Europe, okay, UK, Malta, and so and so forth. Okay, we also assist our clients, okay, to um, get second, second citizenship, okay, that means a passport from the Caribbean islands, okay, and also from uh, this uh, Oceania island, and then the rest are all Asia-centric, okay, um, destination countries. So today, as I mentioned, I'm going to talk about uh, Thai uh, visa programs, all right? First one I'm going to touch on is the retirement visa. Okay, as the name suggests, retirement means is actually meant for people who are already retired, people who are a little bit older in age. Okay, so um, in order to qualify for this, okay, visa, uh, the applicant has to be at least fifty years old and above. Okay, and this Thai uh, visa retirement visa is valid for one year, but it's renewable every year. Okay, um, there are three financial options okay, that the client can go can, can, can enter into if they want to apply for a retirement visa. Okay, put in 800,000 Thai baht or equivalent to about 23,000 US dollars of deposit into a Thai bank, uh, earning at least 65,000 baht or about US $2,000 per month. Okay, uh, and you've got to demonstrate that for the last 12 months or a combination of both. Okay, deposit plus annual income totaling not less than eight hundred thousand uh, baht. Okay. Uh, in order to apply for this retirement visa, the applicant must first okay hold a non-immigrant visa, okay, and then when they enter into Thailand, they convert it into a, a retirement visa if they need to extend their stay. Okay. Now, what is a non-immigrant visa? Non-immigrant visa actually is a short-term, um, you know, 90 days, okay, visa that allows uh, a, a, a foreigner to enter into the country. And then when the, the 90 days is up, right, they will need to leave the country. And if they want to get back in, they have to apply another 90 days. So um, so what, what they do, okay, what the applicant does is that when they're on the non-immigrant visa, Okay, then they, they, if they need to extend their stay without going out of the country of Thailand, then they will apply for this retirement visa. Okay, so there are two steps to it. Okay, so again, I mentioned, okay, 90 days, either you leave the country or if you continue to stay in the country, okay, then you will need to do a 90-day report. So what is this 90-day report? It means you have to report your residence in Thailand to the uh, Immigration Bureau. You have to do that every 90 days, okay? as long as you are staying in, in, in Thailand. Okay, if you intend to go in and out of uh, the country, okay, during the visa validity, you will need to apply for a multi-re-entry permit. If you do not and you leave the country, then your visa is cancelled. Okay, so, uh, so applicants must remember to apply for a re-entry permit. Okay, uh, because it's a retirement visa, as the name suggests, you're supposed to retire in Thailand, you're not allowed to work. The next visa I'm going to talk about, okay, is an investment visa. Now, this investment visa is not very commonly applied for, okay, um, and it's also a little bit more uh, stringent when it comes to the transport money. Okay? Uh, it is also uh, a one-year visa, renewable every year, just like the retirement visa, okay, and um, the applicant needs to invest 10 million baht, but invest in what, okay? Uh, in a new okay, condominium that's approved by the government, put in a deposit in a Thai bank, okay, or invest into Thai government bond. You can do a combination of all these three, okay, as long as the total amount is not less than 10 million baht. So 10 million baht is about US 300,000, it's about there, okay. Um, again, you need to hold a non-immigrant visa to enter into um, Thailand, then after you do a conversion, if you want to extend your stay, okay? Ah, this is the one, okay? In order to put in $10 million into um, Thailand, you need to have a transfer of funds from outside of Thailand into uh, Thailand, 
and the funds right has to be from your own bank account overseas okay so it's a little bit strict when it comes to this criteria okay so that, that's the reason why um, this could be one of the reasons why this investment visa is maybe not so popular okay in, in Thailand uh, and every time you renew okay every time you renew your investments must be there you need to show your investment okay so which means that if you buy a property okay uh, in Thailand every time every year you renew okay you must show that you continue to own the property you cannot sell it you cannot mortgage it you cannot get loan and then the bank owns the title you cannot okay or if you put in a, a deposit a fixed deposit okay with a Thai bank likewise you cannot withdraw you must continuously put there as long as you want to renew your investment visa okay again 90 day report is mandatory multiple uh, entry is uh, permit is also uh, required if you intend to travel in and out of the country okay. uh, you can include your spouse and children uh, under 20 years of age uh, this this visa is very new okay long-term uh, resident visa LPR for short okay this visa was newly introduced okay in uh, September 2022 Okay, the reason why the Thai government introduced this type of visa is because they want to stimulate the economy, okay, and spur economic development in the country after COVID, okay. So uh, COVID hit every country very, very badly, right? So in order to make sure that the economy, um, you know, growth is there, and they want to also grow the, and spur the growth of the Thai property market, right? This is one of the ways for them to do it, to introduce a new visa type. Okay, so that uh, wealthy okay, individuals, uh, retirees, wealthy retirees, and even skilled professionals can enter with the country to help the country to grow. Okay? Okay, so the intention is really to attract okay, uh, wealthy or talented individuals okay, to live, okay, to work, or even to invest in the, in, in the country. So these are all the uh, categories. Okay? There are actually four main categories of individuals including the spouse and the dependents okay so wealthy global citizens wealthy pensioners that means the retirees okay work from thailand professionals that means those who can work remotely okay in thailand from their current uh, company highly skilled professionals those with the skills that's necessary okay for um, the Tha for thailand to grow uh, in the various aspects of their uh, you know development Okay, this is a uh, this is a long term visa. Okay, it's actually ten years, but it's break up into five plus five. Initial approval, the Thai government will give you five years visa validity. Then after you have to renew it for another five years. So it's actually a long term visa. Okay, um, for those uh, who uh, who intends to find work, okay, in uh, Thailand, okay, uh, you can have a work permit in Thailand, provided that the company, okay, uh, can can offer you the job and if the company um, has a LTR visa as one of the applicant right as a new hire okay so that company will be exempted okay from having a 4 is to 1 ratio okay so 4 is to 1 means that right okay a company in Thailand if they want to hire one foreigner they have to have four Thai staff okay so if the company wants to hire someone under LTR they are exempted exempted from this ratio of 4 is to 1 okay so it makes it very flexible for companies in Thailand okay to hire foreigners um, okay so 90 day report for the other two visas you have to do every 90 days right but for this LTR it's actually extended to one year that means you only need to report your residence to the immigration bureau every one year uh, multiple uh, re-entry permits already included in the visa Okay, and the permission to work, obviously. Okay, uh, tax exemption from overseas income. So that, that means that right, any income that is not derived in Thailand will be not it will not be taxed. That means there's no global taxation. Okay, on uh, on income that's earned outside of uh, of Thailand. Okay, then there is this one stop service. Okay, uh, whereby um, they will handle everything that's related to immigration and. Uh, work permit matters okay when it comes to LTR so for example you have approved right 
okay, for this visa, the visa issuance, okay, can be done at this place, okay, one stop service center. If you also have a work permit, okay, you can also collect your work permit from this place. Okay, so it's very convenient. You don't have to go all over the place. Okay, just to handle all your visa and your uh, work permit matters. Okay, just to give you a little bit more information about the four categories. Wealthy individuals have to demonstrate, have to show that you have US $1 million worth of assets. Okay? And you also must have a $80,000 uh, per year, US $80,000 per year of personal income, okay, in the last two years before you apply. Okay, and the requirement in Thailand is that you must invest, okay, 500000 US, okay, in uh, Thai government bonds or foreign direct investment or Thai properties, okay? So this is not difficult because in this exhibition here, you have so many Thai properties that are available, okay, for you to invest in in order to qualify for LTR, okay? Uh, this is another one. Health insurance must be worth at least 50 US, uh, US $50,000 of coverage or your social security actually covers the treatment, okay, in uh, Thailand or you place 100,000 US of deposit, okay, in Thailand. Okay, for wealthy uh, retirees, $80,000 per year of personal income, okay, uh, at the point of application. If um, the retiree doesn't have 80, but has half of that, okay, then there's one additional requirement is this person must invest 250,000 US, okay, in Thai government bonds, foreign direct investment or Thai property. So if income is half of that, then you have to put in this one as a two thousand US. Okay. Again, health insurance, same thing. Okay, this is a must. So the third category of LTR, okay, is the work from Thailand. Okay, so it's for remote workers. Okay, who who are based, who can be based out of Thailand to work. Again, the eighty thousand US per year personal income for the last two years is uh, is mandatory. Okay, if you don't have that, then you must, if you only have half of that, right, 80,000, right, then you, you must show that you have a master's degree and above, okay, or you own your uh, an intellectual property, okay, or, okay, your company has received series A funding, so it's like uh, you have a funding from the government or you have funding from angel investors, okay, in your startup company. Um, you can work, okay, the applicant can work for a public listed company, if not, if it's a privately held company, then the company okay must have revenue of at least US 150 million okay over last over three years. So you can see that this okay uh, to qualify for this this category, okay, this worker must be working for fairly large and established okay companies. Uh, must demonstrate five years of relevant work experience in the last ten years. Okay, so for highly skilled professionals, okay, again eighty thousand okay, of uh, income, uh, personal income, okay, uh, per year. If you don't have that, okay, you have only half of that, right? Then you must show that you have master's degree or above in science and technology, okay, or you have special uh, expertise that is relevant to the job assignment that you have in uh, Thailand. No, no minimum income is required if you happen to, or this applicant happens to work for a Thai government, okay? Um, the, the, the industries they are in, okay, should be in the, sorry, should be in the targeted industries whereby it's um, like digital economy, you know, uh, advanced manufacturing and so and so forth, okay? Uh, and all, okay, this person must be working in education, higher education institutions, um, research institutions, you know, uh, specialized training, and so and so on, or even a Thai uh, agency, okay, government agency, and you must, the person must demonstrate, okay, five years of work experience, okay, in the targeted industry, okay. So if you're working for someone in the digital industry, okay, or rather the applicant is from the digital industry, Okay, then this person must have that strong domain knowledge, okay, in that industry. Again, the social uh, the insurance is a must, okay? 
Okay, so I've already mentioned three, okay, visa pathways. The fourth one, okay, I'm going to touch on is the Thailand elite visa, which is hugely popular, okay, with a lot of um, high net worth, okay, uh, wealthy individuals, okay, who also wants to have a membership that allows them to be uh, like country club kind of membership, okay. Uh, very unique, okay, tourist visa, but it's a, a five-year renewable, okay, uh, multi-entry long-term tourist visa. So it's really very long, uh, okay, so it means that it's just a tourist visa, lasts for five years, allows you to come in and out of Thailand, okay, and comes with privileges, okay. And this visa, right, okay, uh, has got membership packages, okay, what are they? They offer five years, ten years, or twenty years of membership, okay. Um, so you can have a various, you have different, different options for you to choose from. Okay, be it single applicant or, or family applicant. Okay, so um, the membership, right? Okay, comes with prestigious privileges. Later, I will show you what it is. Okay, what they are. Um, of course, you've got to pay a fee. Just like if you join a country club, you have to pay a fee. So likewise, in order for you to have this membership, you have to pay a fee of between okay six hundred thousand baht okay to about two million baht. So in uh, US dollars equivalent, it's about seventeen thousand US to about fifteen nine thousand US, depending on uh, whether you choose five years, ten years, or you know, or twenty years, and the kind of privileges that you want. Okay, I mentioned can be single or family application. Okay, so privileges, what are they? Fast track immigration service, lounge access, limo uh, pickup service from the airport, okay? Um, and you have government concierge services, for example, if you need to do 90 day reporting, um, you know, the concierge service will be able to do it for you. Or if you need to uh, open bank account, okay, the concierge service also will be able to uh, help you with that, okay? Complimentary, golf, spa, other lifestyle services, you know? travel um, and, and tour or hotel and all that. These are all, all, all available. All you need to do is just not call the concierge. Okay? And also some packages will allow you to have annual health check. Okay, as to I think all of you will be aware, okay, that Thailand is very, very well known for its medical tourism, okay, because the standard of medical service there is actually very high. So a lot of foreigners, okay, will enter into uh, you know Thailand to do their checkups, to do you know surgeries and so and so forth. So it's very very popular. Okay, you can stay in Thailand. This visa allows you to stay in Thailand, okay, for one year, okay, per entry, but you can extend it if you want to, okay. Uh, also, there is no need, okay, to have re-entry permit because the visa already comes with a multiple uh, re-entry permit. Right? Okay, this is very small. <laughs> okay, bear with me. So this one has got, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight packages, eight memberships, okay, that you can actually see what are the privileges you want to go for and you pay for it. So for example, I know you may not be able to see, yeah, okay, so let me just point out some things to you. Okay, so for example, okay, the most uh, expensive membership is actually a two million baht, okay, and it lasts for 20 years. It's only for one person, for the main applicant, that's it. You cannot include spouse, you cannot include children, you cannot transfer. Or rather, this one, you can transfer one time to one other person, okay. So, yeah, so this is the most expensive and because, you know, every visa is five years, right? Okay, so with what this means is that if you if you hold a 20 year membership, right, that means you can renew three times or five years. Okay, so this is what it means, that's why it's renewable. But if you choose something that is only valid for five years, all right, here, okay, so for example, you choose the basic one, okay, which is the elite uh, easy access, which is for valid for five years, and you pay the lowest rate of 600,000 uh, Thai baht, right, okay, then you get your visa initial approval for five years and that's it. Once the visa ends and that's it. Okay, you have you cannot renew anymore. So it ties into your membership that you have purchased. Okay? So uh it also tell you how many times of um limousine service you have, is it long haul, short haul, um the activities that you can do, for example, golf course, you know, access, uh boxing class, how many times and so on, and whether you get it or not. So it's really very um country club, right? <laughs> Uh, spa packages, uh, uh, annual health check, whether it's included, yes or no, okay? 
uh, and then maybe a piece service will be all the uh, airport, you know, fast track, somebody to help you check in, you know, somebody to help you clear immigration, and so on and so forth. These are all detailed here, okay? Yes, 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 yes. That means all will apply, okay? All packages you will have fast track, uh, you know, service at the airport, the VIP service, okay? Uh, whether they are, uh, you are, you can go for the government concierge service by open bank account, do the 90 day reporting and all that, it's all also available for all packages, okay? Yeah. Uh, there is one, I want to highlight, there is one, okay? This one here is called Elite Family Excursion, okay? Uh, what we've heard is that, right, it will be discontinued, okay, from June this year. Okay, so which means from June this year, yeah, it will no longer be available, but it's still currently available. Okay, so this is a family application, okay? Okay. Um, this is uh, AIMS, uh, social media, okay? So we are available on Facebook, Instagram, WeChat, LinkedIn, as well as our website. Okay, so please, uh, you know, like us, uh, go to the website, take a look, and so and so forth, okay? Um, I've come to the end of my presentation, all right? Um, I'll be available here, okay, if you need to ask any questions regarding Thailand, okay? Uh, myself and uh, our, our colleagues here also will be available to speak to you one-to-one, -one, okay, for a personal consultation. Okay, next is the most interesting topic, okay, which is on Singapore, and I'm going to invite my CEO, okay, Pierce Ching, okay, to share with you on what it takes, okay, to migrate to Singapore, and what are the visas available, okay? So uh, thank you very much for your attention. All right. So you enjoy the next section. Okay. Before the last session. Yeah. So really, yeah. Uh, because I'm just going to talk for two hours. So if you don't leave now, so you have to be stuck here for two hours. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Pierce. Thank you for making time to come to today's event. Uh, thanks to Meitu Chan. Uh, she has been organizing this on a quarterly basis. At this time around, she was kind enough to extend the invitation to have us here as well. Yeah. So, if I'm speaking too quickly, please let me know. Um, I'm, I'm Singaporean, so we have a tendency to speak Singlish. And yeah, so that's our version of the English. So, yeah, this, this is the company that has been around in Singapore for the last 17 years. Um, so, because we are headquartered in Singapore, so, so Singapore is one of our core products which Jennifer probably talked about it earlier. Okay, so um, the, the top four countries are our core, and of course this time around, right, we are specific about Thailand and Singapore because of the real estate that is linked to this event as well. So whenever there's a country that we focus or help people to move to, um, we focus on four key pillars, immigration, education, property, and healthcare, which is very important when you are settling in a place whether it's renting, uh, whether it's buying, I think um, Chum's team will be there to help you guys. But when it comes to immigration or education for your children or for yourself and healthcare needs, right? I think once all these are taken care of, then you should be ready to settle in that country. I mean, of course, there's culture and those softer things that will take time to develop. But all this, we do our best to help you settle down. But most of the things, it takes time. Okay, it takes time. Just like we know, there are a lot of uh, Burmese people who live in Thailand. There's also a lot of Burmese people who live in Singapore. But um, if you pay close attention, right, they are still very close knitted in their own circle of friends. There's no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. But if you really want to settle into a country, you really have to mingle with the locals. You really have to mingle with the locals, which takes time. It really takes time, okay? So um, as an immigration vendor, we are here to try to bridge the gap. Okay, it's not the easiest thing to do because you have to be very willing to open up as well. Yeah, but I'm just sharing today because in Singapore space, it is not so straightforward, okay? Okay, um, just, just so you know, when we first started in 2006, right? Um, five million Singapore dollars, okay, five million Singapore dollars, which is the current um, 40, 44 million chart, 44 million chart, five million Singapore dollars. Um, that was the immigration requirement, 2006. Fast forward to 2023, the 5 million Singapore dollars has became 200 million Singapore dollars. Okay, so that is a 40 times growth. Assuming um, 44 million times 40, so we are talking about almost 
two billion chart just to qualify for immigration to Singapore. Um, after 17 years in the business, having facilitated more than 20 countries of immigration, um, I'm not proud to say, but I think this is the most immigrate, most extensive immigrate, immigration program ever. Most extensive, okay? But today I'm just going to share with you, okay? Just understand that if you cannot qualify, uh, don't stress yourself out, it's normal, okay? 99.9% .9 of the people that we meet cannot qualify, okay? Cannot qualify, but because of today's subject, I just want to share with you, okay? Um, there are a few things that you need, okay? You should be uh, at least three years entrepreneur, your business turnover should be at least 200 million Singapore dollars, which is about four billion, thereabouts, if my math is not failing me. And you must earn at least 30% shares in the company, okay? So this is if you are established business owner, okay? For the second generation, um, which I think as far as my visits to Myanmar from 2018 until now served me, I think there are a lot of family businesses in Myanmar. So there are a lot of second generation business owners. The criteria is even more stringent. They expect you to turn over 500 million, okay, which is um, honestly quite a huge amount, all right? And finally, fast growth company, which probably I realized that um, you guys also use Grab here. Yeah, Grab is an example of a fast growth company where the founders originally from Malaysia, they now live in Singapore. So they use this stream, the fast growth company stream, to move into Singapore, all right? Okay, family office. Anybody knows what's a family office? Okay, so, so the oldest family office in the world is about 190 years old, right? Because for example, not for example, okay? The truth is I have four children, right? I have four children. If I have $10 and I die today, it's very easy, right? I tell my insurance company, say, oh, you give each of my children $2.50 times four, done. But that's what a estate can do. That's what a will can do. Okay, so what can a family office do? A family office is like a trust. Okay, for example, my oldest boy is 10 years old, right? But I want to give him $1 when he's 20 years old, another dollar when he's 30 years old, another 50 cents when he's 40 years old. So, who can do that? A trust can do that, right? A trust can do that so you can plan for generations to come. Okay, so that's what a family office is about. A family office helps you to plan for your next generation, next, next generation's wealth, okay, for succession planning. It's something where the rich people will use to protect. I am sure some of you will know this lady. Her name is Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton, she's the, she's the heiress, the daughter of the founder of the Hilton Group, a very famous lady, a party animal, always drinking, always partying. Okay, so the bad thing about what the Hilton family, what they did not do, is they did not have a family office. That's why when the father passed away, she got all the money, straight away, like one to two billion dollars. That's why she become like that. If the father give her 10 million a month, maybe she wouldn't become like that. You, you get the idea? That's why family office, succession planning is important for those people who have children or next generation and next next generation. Okay, if you don't do this kind of planning, I mean, if you're very rich, then you should do this kind of planning. If you're not very rich, then forget it, okay? Like the Hilton, they have to do this kind of planning. So, if you decide to go to Singapore to set up a family office and you bring 200 million Singapore dollars, our government will give you a direct PR, okay? So why would anybody do that, right? It's very simple. The reason why they will do that is because of this. Let me just explain to you, uh, give me a while. Uh. Okay, so this is a family office, right? So this is you, Oops. this is you, this is your money, this is the family office in Singapore. So your money can be used to do a lot of investments. So your investments will generate returns. So why do you do it in Singapore? Because the returns that you generate from the investment, it's taxed at 0%. So that's why many families like these people, this person used to sell hot pot in China, 
very famous Chinese restaurant called Hai Di Lao. So he sells a lot of hot pot. This gentleman used to sell vacuum cleaner and hair dryer, still selling, James Tyson. This gentleman, he is the co-founder of a very big search engine called Google. All these people decided to come to Singapore, whether it's from China, from UK, from America, they decided to come to Singapore to set up a family office. One, because they have a lot of money. Number two, because they are taking advantage of the tax benefits. Okay? So, of course, these people, they have billions of dollars. Okay? But in Singapore, if you want to set up a family office, the minimum you need is 20 million Singapore dollars in the second year. Okay, if you are prepared to put 20 million into your family office, you will be eligible for the tax incentives. Meaning to say, the investments that you do via your family office will be taxed at zero. That's one. And number two, you can get employment pass via your family office. Okay, which allows you and your family to live in Singapore permanently until the day you decide to apply for PR. Okay, which will still allow you to stay there permanently. All right. So this is what we do, this is what, how we help people to settle down and this is why our country will get richer and richer because it's attracting a lot of money from all over the world and this is why our real estate is... Okay, probably Chan can tell you better but I think um, in terms of investment angles because of the scarcity of the land, right? I think um, Singapore is probably smaller than Yangon not Myanmar, smaller than Yangon so because of the scarcity of the land, when things are lesser, it becomes more expensive. So which is why I think for any of you who have bought something from Cham, whether it's in Singapore or Thailand, you probably understand the concept. Yep. So this is why. Why family office? Because of succession planning. Why Singapore? Because of tax incentive and political stability and the country's financial resources and whatnot. This is why a lot of people come to Singapore to invest. And right now, the government is offering opportunities to set up family office and yet have a residence permit called the Employment Pass to live in Singapore. And I think that's important. Because if you set up a family office, you put your money there and you cannot live there, then it's really pointless. It doesn't help anybody, it doesn't serve any purpose. Okay, so assuming we don't have $20 million, which again is normal, okay? Most people we meet don't have $20 million. It's really normal, okay? So how then can you come to Singapore, okay? Many Myanmar family that I've met, they own a trading company in Singapore. It's usually registered at this place called Peninsula Plaza. So the moment I step into Peninsula Plaza, I feel like I've entered into a different country. It's very normal, it's very normal. So in Singapore, it's very diverse. We have Little India, we have Chinatown, we have small Koreatown. Actually, there is a little Myanmar, just that we don't call it that way. We call it Peninsula Plaza, okay? So the moment we step into Peninsula Plaza, we know, we know, okay? It's all, <laughs> okay, so, so trading companies is one way, nothing wrong, okay? And the trading company has helped many of our Myanmar clients receive their employment pass. Again, nothing wrong, okay? It's nothing wrong until this September. Okay, come this September, our government is going to... Oops, sorry, I don't have the slide, but it doesn't matter. Okay, come this September, our government is going to introduce this stream or this test model called Compass. Okay, it's called Compass. So what's going to happen in Compass is that they're going to check what is the paid up capital of your company, what is the turnover of your company, how many local staff do you have and why you are able to continue to renew your EP or apply for your EP, okay? So whatever we have been doing for our Myanmar client, okay, incorporating a trading company, helping them to get an EP, it has worked and it will continue to work until September this year. So you have to be very careful about the next steps. If your plan is to continue to settle in Singapore and continue to renew the EP, until you are able to eventually apply for PR, all right? So that's something that you have to think about. So if you don't know what to do, and you don't want to set up a family office because it's simply too expensive, then you can explore one of our exclusive program. We are tying up with a listed company, okay? The name of the listed company is called Livingstone Health, okay? You can check it, it's public information. They are listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange called SGX, okay? So Livingstone Health is a healthcare group, 
Okay, it's a healthcare group that helps people across um, eight different kinds of medical services, from medical checkup to gastro, endo, physio, um, orthopedic. Okay, and of course, a general practitioner where we go and see our doctors when we are fall, when we fall sick. Okay, so the general practitioner arm of Livingstone Health, the general practitioner, the general practitioner arm of Livingstone Health is called Phoenix Medical Group. Okay, the Phoenix Medical Group, um, as of now, as of now, Phoenix Medical Group has four clinics. Okay, it covers the entire Singapore, north, south, east, and west. But they are looking at having another six clinics within the year of 2023. Within the year of 2023. Okay, so um, so by the, by the end of 2023, we will be having ten Phoenix Medical. So you can have the opportunity to partake in this business. Okay by franchising a clinic is a pretty new concept because people probably heard of franchising McDonald's, franchising Pizza Hut, but not many people heard of franchising a clinic. The good thing about franchising a clinic, working with a listed company in Singapore is number one, okay, your financials are safe and it's very clear, right? Because as a listed company, they do reporting on a monthly or quarterly basis. Number two, licensing, licensing for healthcare is always very difficult because it requires license. So because they are listed, because they have 25 doctors in their team, so there'll be no issues with the license. Number three, location selection will determine the success or failure of your business. But working with Phoenix Medical Group, they will ensure they pick the right locations where a clinic should be. We all will know where we should set up a restaurant, right? Because everybody knows how to eat. But even a doctor can make a mistake at establishing a clinic at the wrong location because you do not know the marketplace, Singapore, and you do not know the kind of crop that you will attract. So I think it's important partnering them so that they'll take care from the, from the beginning all the way to the end, from <coughs> confirming your deposit, applying for your employment pass via the listed company, making sure the location, the hiring of doctors and nurses, the licenses, the clinic systems, the bank accounts, inventory, how much medicine should you store in your clinic. Everything will be planned by Phoenix Medical Group so that it's flawless and from month zero to month four, your clinic is already operational. If we are not in the industry, we come into the business to set up a clinic, I don't think it will happen in four months. It will probably happen in 24 months, just the licensing alone. So how much will it cost you? It will cost you Singapore dollars 1.4 million, not 20 million at a family office. The paid up capital is 700,000. You will put in a, a shareholder's loan of 500,000. There is a franchise fee of 200,000. This is where your 1.4 million will be spent, okay? Of course, the money sitting in the bank account should be around 800,000, just to make ensure that our operating expenditure is sufficient, the OPEX, okay? These are the existing clinics, okay? This is the concept picture of the next clinic that they are setting up. Okay, so now that we have talked about how you get your EP, and then whether it's your trading company, whether it's your own company, whether it's a healthcare group, we are gonna talk about how you can apply for PR, okay? Number one, if you are self-employed, then you need to ensure you have at least 30% shares. Number two, your question will be, so Piers, how many Singaporeans should I recruit? you must always recruit one more than your foreigners. For example, today if I set up a company and I'm a Burmese and I'm the only employment pass holder in my company, then I need to make sure I have two locals. So I'm always one more than the foreign staff, okay? Number three, GST. Okay, the GST in Singapore is currently at 8%. You need to register GST so that when your clients pay you, you need to pay it to the government. You need to pay your employer's social security. It's called Central Provident Fund, okay, social security. And you need to pay corporate tax, which is currently 17%, 17%, okay? Why 12,000? Because it's very high, okay? And because with $12,000, you can bring along your wife or your husband, you can bring your children, and you can also bring your parents. So when we apply PR at some point, we can tell the government, okay, my whole family is here. My wife is here, my children are here, my parents are here. That means I'm, I'm clearly someone who wants to settle, okay? And of course, we have to pay our taxes, okay? 
So these are the nine key points. Most of our clients cannot get all nine, okay, but we do our best. If you are able to get all nine, we believe you stand a high chance in securing PR, okay, but most clients cannot get all nine, so we try to attain at least 70%, okay? But there is one point that is non-negotiable, is this point. Okay, so if you're not prepared to live in Singapore, then your EP to PR application will not happen. So if you're not prepared to stay, then I suggest, um, yeah, we don't apply for the PR. So what is the definition of stay? More than 183 days per year. <coughs> More than six months per year, okay? Economic contribution, all the taxes that I mentioned just now, from CPF to corporate income tax to personal income tax to GST, okay? Professional achievement. So some of you are already very established in your career. We need to replicate that in Singapore, okay? Education level can't be changed, okay? If you already have a good education, good. If you don't have, we can neglect this, okay? Social integration, okay? Early on, I spoke about this. If you're just going to go to Singapore and you're just going to hang out with your fellow Burmese nationals, um, that's not going to work, okay? Because when we apply for PR, we'll expect five recommendation letters coming from Singaporeans and Singapore PR to support and endorse your application. It has to come from the heart. For example, right, I hang out with Mr. Wien, okay, every Sunday, okay, and then we go to church together. Okay, after church, my children and Mr. Wien's children will have lunch together, probably at Aston's, and after that, we'll go to different parks, whether it's East Coast Park or Marina Bay Park. Something like that. One very real letter, and we need five of that, okay? Ties of kinship, as I've explained, why we strategize for your salary to be 12,000, because we want you to bring your partner, your wife or your husband, your children and your parents in the application. So there's ties of kinship, okay? Some of our, anybody here have sons? Boy, as your children? Only one? Okay, cool. I have three boys, right? And my three boys, like me, we are going to serve the army in Singapore. Right? So a lot of people, they don't want that for their children. Nothing wrong, you have a choice, right? And I don't, because my children are born Singaporean, right? So, but you must understand, the moment you apply for PR and your son is included, then your son has to serve national service. So many a times my client will tell me, say, oh, Pierce, then it's very simple, I just don't include him. Correct, correct. So we have a Japanese client who has been with us for about 12 years from employment past, He's still applying for his PR now. He refused to include his son. Refused. Because he don't want the son to serve the army. Because he said, oh, we are descendants of the warrior and the samurai. We cannot serve for other people's national service. So until today, after lodging his PR six times, he's still rejected. So, ties of kinship. If you're not ready to include your son, then don't go ahead to apply, all right? Industry type. Okay, there are three industries that is simply no-no. Number one is called a coffee shop. Okay, number two is called a massage parlor. Okay, and number three is called agency business. Okay, these three businesses are not supported by the government. Not, not charms kind of agency, more like employment agency kind, all right? Job creation, you always have to create one more Singaporean job than your foreigners. And commendations, okay? Whether you can get it from um, certain chambers, certain associations, certain charities, I think all these are important. So with these nine factors, that's when we deem our client to be ready to apply for Singapore PR. Okay, so for some people who want to take the further step and they decide to become a Singaporean, okay, you have to be a PR for at least two years and then you launch the application. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about property in Singapore. Because Singapore has made the news again in April, okay, and this is what we have done. As a foreigner, if you so much so decide to buy a real estate today, you will be paying 60% additional tax compared to a Singaporean. So I pay zero, same 1 million property we buy, I pay 1 million, you pay 1.6 million. The moment you become a PR, 1.05 versus 1.6. Okay, but if you want to become a PR and then buy property, first of all, the property prices would have escalated a lot because it takes two to three years of planning. And secondly, there is no guarantee to a Singapore PR. There's no guarantee, all right? It's really challenging. The competition is very intense because there are a lot of applications and it's really a very small country, okay? So this is our social media. 
So now uh, we have come to the Q&A. Okay, I'm going to ask you questions and you need to answer correctly. If not, you cannot leave. Okay? So sir, what is my son's name? Okay, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sir, um, what is my company's name? Okay, very good, sir. Well done. Uh, it's called... Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> okay, no problem, no problem. Uh, madam, the lady who is organizing the event, what is her name? Jennifer. Correct. Well done. Okay, so finally we got one right answer. So any questions for us? No? How to settle in Thailand? No. How to settle in Singapore? No. Uh, it seems like uh, quite expensive to settle in Singapore. <laughs> indeed, indeed. It is honestly quite expensive to settle in Singapore. Yeah. I think we have just uh, gone up to the, the most expensive country in Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think second most expensive in the world, mm -hmm. just after New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but nonetheless, uh, it's good that you guys got to know us um, and know that we help people to settle and relocate. We are very honest about what we can do and what we cannot do. Singapore is honestly expensive, not for everybody. Yeah, but uh, for those people who are keen to go there, um, to settle down, it's something that we can assist. Or whether it's for your kids' education and whatnot. I think we have been facilitating that for the last 17 years. Um, one thing about Singapore is that you can just walk around at night and don't have to be worried about anything. Yeah, I guess that's one of the key considerations when we talk about safety. It's something that uh, we, we are proud of and we value a lot. We value a lot, yeah. And I guess having the benchmark set so high, right, is also another reason how we keep the prime rate very low. Because not everybody is able to come in and settle. Yeah, it's not easy, honestly. Very, very expensive. Uh, my question to you is that the, uh, if I become the uh, kind of uh, not the uh, investor, okay. but just yeah, like try to employ in some of the uh, company, and yes. then I'll yes. have to uh, how how am I supposed to become like PR? It's the same thing. Wait, once like? you <laughs> once you have the once you have the employment pass, right? That means you're working in Singapore. You should still focus on these nine things okay. before you launch your PR. Okay. Right, so I mean some of the things if you're not an employer, you cannot create jobs so you can ignore them But you should still focus on being in the right industry sure. So for example, if you're going to work in the technology space or the financial space versus the F&B space okay. Then I suggest the technology space um, and the financial space will be more welcome than the F&B space okay. Yes Thank you. No, no, pleasure, pleasure No, no second question my, my son's name is Ben. Oh, I yeah, yeah. Jennifer is our colleague. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I remember my questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have another question. Sure, ma'am. Uh, some of my friends, uh, yes. he, he, he already gave up his PR last time, so long ago. Wow. So, but uh, what if he wants to apply for it again? Is there any chance that he can apply for it? From our experience, um, we have seen Indonesians, Burmese, Vietnamese, Chinese, and Malaysians who have given up their Singapore PR. The chances of getting it back again, from AIM's experience, um, is zero. Yeah, just to be very honest, okay? I mean, but I'm, I, we are just limited to those nationalities. Okay. Um, other nationalities who have given up, we have not seen before, but Malaysian, Vietnamese, Burmese, um, Chinese, yeah, we have seen all this who have given up and they have tried to come back to get it again, um, there hasn't been any success. Yeah, in fact, we have even seen some whose employment passes are harder to approve because they gave up their PR so that they could avoid army. Yeah, and now it's giving them some issues. We have seen all this. So, yeah, so I guess Singapore is sticky in a certain way. They remember. <laughs> yeah, they remember. They have all the data. Correct, yeah, correct. So, so have to be very careful. Uh, okay. you know. <laughs> Either you want to become a uh, uh, PR in Thailand or PR in Singapore. Singapore PR is a PR in Thailand or PR in Singapore. Singapore PR is a PR in Thailand or PR in Singapore. Uh, Leo. Yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs>